I welcome you all to our webinar on improving collaboration by awareness of mind games. Now, this session is little different. It is it is just not the usual agile uh, program which we do. Here we are looking into some of the aspects which are more related to a pattern, a continuous pattern of, of doing something and which might be resulting into a continuous behavior which you try to change, but you find you are trapped into it. So this is something, a, a type of games we are going to uh, see in today's session. Now, before I go forward, a little bit about me. So I run a company named Eisenbridge and we are in the business of enhancing uh, employability of working professionals. And I do have a lot of interest in doing coaching related stuff. So I am ICF uh, certified coach and I also teach other agile topics like project management, uh, Kanban, SAFE and other facilitation and coaching related things. And I also like this game subject a lot. So I have been observing the games which I am playing and I also see a lot of players around me playing those those games and you will get get an insight of what I am talking after uh, uh, some time. Now before we move forward, so this is the goal of this particular session. So it's like when we want to create a team which can manage themselves, we also need some mechanism to make them aware about what is happening inside the team. And this particular topic I believe will help you to see how the games are getting played and how as an agile coach, scrum master or a project manager, you can make your teams aware of what is happening in their interaction. So that's the, the, the objective by making them aware Probably they, they understand what they should do to convert not so positive patterns or a negative patterns into the productive and positive patterns in their conversation. So that's the, the whole uh, session is about it. Now, before we go forward, I do want to know about the audiences. So for that, I am running up a poll and this poll will help me to know who are here and uh, this is just a simple thing. I'm asking which of the following represent your current uh, 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 position. So anything which comes near to your uh, uh, thing that project manager, whatever. So it's not necessarily the exact designation about it, but something which uh, which shows uh, what you are uh, doing. Okay, so yes, yeah, some are still responding and I would like to share this with all of you. So you also understand what is happening in your uh, 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 webinar area. So it's like uh, uh, we have more or less a community coming from Agile Coach, Scrum Master and Project Manager space. So this is a, is a perfect audience composition which, which is suitable for, for understanding the mind games and probably can make some use of, of these techniques as we move forward. Now, Let's start with something called team coaching. Now, before we even get into mind games and all, we need to understand how the problem which we are addressing here is how to make team more and more aware so they can self-organize themselves. Now, the traditional view of team is something like team is collection of individuals. And in order to improve the team performance, we need to improve the team's members performance and most of the initial coaching mentoring effort by the project managers by the scrum masters were focusing on individual members of the team now we realize that individual members are important but the team is just not a collective sum of individuals it is the whole system and this is like a nice quote from uh, from Napoleon Hill, which talks about that no two minds ever come together without thereby creating a third invisible intangible force, which may be likened to be a third mind. Now, what does it mean? When we interact with each other, we don't remain our original entity. We don't remain our original thought process person. When we have two people interacting, their thoughts, their action influences each other. And their combined behavior is something which emerges from their own influence on each other. 
Now, similarly, when we are working in a team environment, it is not like individual person is behaving the way he originally or uninterruptedly might want it to behave. When he see the team dynamics, his behavior is a is an emergent behavior which is coming from team as a as a system. Now, many time we we try to solve the problem by isolating it, dividing it. And this is something we, we have been doing even in, in team environment or team coaching space as well. So we may have a particular type of problem or a person might have a problem. We try to isolate that and try to fix that part of it. And it's like if you have a big problem, it's a good way of, of looking at thing is that why don't we divide the problem into a smaller, smaller component and let's look at a one component at a time. So by the time, uh, we understand this particular component, we should be able to solve the rest of the problem. Now, it looks good, but there are downside of this particular approach. When we divide the problem into a smaller problems, it does not produce the equivalent amount of problem. So the, the funny way to look at it is that dividing an elephant in half does not produce two small elephants. So it's like that we divided the problem, we divided the elephant into a parts, but now we are not looking at the whole system in a one go. And that is what the team coaching uh, uh, approach, the modern team coaching approach is tells us that look at the problem whole. So we need to look at the complete system, complete system in order to, to find a way to improve the team performance. So this is something as a starting point for our uh, uh, the mind uh, things. And, and one more thing before we get into the games is that most of you might have gone through some coaching programs. I see 28% of the response uh, like uh, recipe, uh, attendees are agile coaches and rest are scrum masters. So I'm assuming many of you have an idea of doing coaching and in the coaching, the coach and coachee performs a conversation. The goal of the coach is to improve the thinking and potential of the coachee based on these conversations and powerful questioning. Now the difference between a one-on-one -on -one coaching or a generic coaching and team coaching is in the team coaching it is not about you doing conversation with a coachee or you doing conversation with the team members it's more about they doing conversation among each other so the power of team coaching is not in the conversation they have with the coach the power of the conversation the, co the team coaching is in, is in the conversation they have with each other so their each other conversation influences them them and create something which is I am saying an emergent behavior in the team which leads to a certain type of of uh, patterns and and reactions now let's get back and start unveiling a game part of it now this is a little bit more psychological and what I'm trying to do here is or what I'm doing here is I'm relating these psychological concepts in in a team context in a project management in development context which probably help you to see something which can improve the team coaching uh, part of it so this whole concept is coming from a book which is named as the game people play it's like a psychology of human relation it's a very old book written by eric Berin, and it describes both functional and non-functional interaction so in this particular webinar, you will get an insight of some of these games. And if it, it generates interest in you, you can take this conversation forward and I will recommend some of the learning material and the training program, which can help you to know more about this particular content. So the mind games. So this is like a something in which people interact through a pattern and predictable series of transactions or you say behavior or interactions it's like you you know that you are going to say this the other person is going to say this the team is going to behave like this and and whatever you do you see this pattern continues all the time something happens people start blaming each other the the things get escalated you you just talk about it for one or two hours and the pattern continues Another uh, next day again, something happens. Somebody starts blaming to, to other person. Other people protect themselves. And it is something like a loop, 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 which, which never 
breaks and if you look from outside as a project manager scrum master agile coach you know this is going to happen and you you can clearly see that in my team or in in, in my interaction with someone if something like this will come people are going to behave in this particular way and you can see it once you start developing an awareness and you wonder why this is happening and this can be understood more in, in more detail when we see the hidden transactions behind it in a simple simple way when we see the difference between what people are saying and what people are meaning and lot of things are happening based on the ulterior things which are not coming in the conversation very very clearly but they are prominently visible and and creating a loop of conversation which never ends now uh, you may think uh, uh, that uh, that uh, okay why these things happens in this particular way and uh, the idea of game which we we are going to explore is also influenced by the way we see the world the whole thinking or 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 the beliefs which we have in our head influences our day to day behavior patterns so we are conditioned in a particular way which is coming from from our outlook our outlook for the world and it is like it creates a reality a reality for you so we can start with the statement is the reality is based on your perception of the truth so whatever you perceived becomes reality for you and that is why when people perceive in a particular way they will keep perceiving in that particular way and that's why it creates a pattern of of behavior that that's why it creates a repetitiveness in our life if you start seeing a one type of problem in your life you see what is happening every year i end up into a similar problem i solve it but again i am i am again getting into the similar stuff because that is a pattern so i i give you a little brief about it which is which which can help you to see what i am saying so it's like there are boxes so these are five boxes you might see here what we are exploring here is so this is like you enter in a room and you observe what is happening so we call says that we observe the data and experience so wherever you get into a new situation something which you you look at things so there will be millions of data points which you can observe but your our mind has a limit so i have a limit of observing everything so what i will do i will select data from what i observe so i will create a subset of it so i will pick some information some data from the big 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 observation i create a some small set subset of it now this is small subset because i can't capture everything i add my experience my conditioning my interpretation to it because this is how i process information so i add meaning based on my thinking my experience my perceptions and then i draw a conclusion that okay, okay this means something like this now based on these conclusions i i create a belief i create a belief in 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 my mind that this is how things might be here so i create an understanding of it and now once i create that belief i go back i go back to the original source and again pick up the data which supports my belief so when i have a belief in my head i am no more looking at the data unbiasedly i have developed my bias for it so this is something like whenever you find a situation we always you and i always try to match it with something we already know we try to mix it with our own experience now it may look very logical that okay without understanding the experience how can i understand something i have to add meaning to it the data just look the data now okay but look also in a different direction whenever you add meaning to it your meanings remains more or less static and even if things are changing you don't see them changing you keep adding the similar meanings to it and that is why the pattern keeps continued and if some some interactions transactions are happening between two people both of them has their beliefs in their head and they they see a pattern of transactions also going on beliefs plus transactions makes those pattern live for very very long and creates something called a game so we 
move forward and see some of the interesting games from this now in between if you get some ideas some questions or you see that okay this is not at all making sense and i have a difference of opinion or something please put your comment in the question area so there is something in a question area and you can put it there it will reach me and i will take a pause in between and see what all is coming there and probably that can help me to modify my conversation as i go forward so so by now what we have covered is a perspective for team coaching which is more like talking about how the team coaching is not just a coaching individuals it is also about uh, uh, it is also about handling and taking it in a systematic view now here is the place so i pause for a while to see if if somebody has a question here by now okay so the book name will come uh, towards the end so this is something uh, is 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 anyway there uh, and is is this happening in a corporate process in place we will see uh, 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 let's see some of the games and then you will see you may find them happening in your organization and you may see that okay fortunately we are good and we don't have these all uh, games great so here you are you have a list of few games now there could be uh, like dozens of games which are given in, there are dozens of game which are given in that particular book the game people play and uh, those are just subset of the possible games which you might see in the real life just to keep things simple and relevant to our corporate area i have picked up four games for this particular presentation so the first one i am saying is now i have got you you son of a bitch it's a one game looks like very interesting one the other one is see what you made me do aren't it awful and why don't you yes but now some of you like you might be getting some ideas just based on these names and here we start with our first game and see what makes sense now now i have got you son of the page is something like a context where you find a fault in someone a person finds a fault in someone which is of not that much of magnitude but you wanted to teach the guy lesson for a while and you explored the whole point and create a big mess out of it because you want to give him a good lesson there so it's like that played by people who 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 usually get angry frequently and anger is kind of a recurring feeling for them they are usually higher in authority and uh, uh, they just pick up the idea and just blast on the other guy because he has done some mistake now one person is playing the good thing about game is it cannot be played by one person so if i am getting angry and i am playing now i have got you son of the bitch i also need a player who is at the opposite size and on whom i am putting my anger or expression out now in a simple simple uh, example you can say in a casual conversation scrum master discovers that one of the development team member did not give complete information of his work during the last daily scrum and scrum master calls the team member and starts yelling about how he could miss not sharing the details in a daily scrum something like this or it may happen that there was a a, a, a this sprint review or some product demo was happening and things were going good and in between something goes wrong which, which was relatively a smaller in magnitude but one of the stakeholder picks up and gives a whole like a big lecture on that particular point and want to just take this opportunity and show that how irresponsible this team is they don't do 2 3 4 5 round of testing before they invite such kind of uh, uh, important stakeholder soon to to see the product so this is like yes there is an issue but the other guy explored the issue with with the magnitude of maybe 1000 because that is what he wants to to pay now what do you do now what do you do when the other person is playing uh, this game with you some person is is angry and just want to pick up something and and, and want to get rid of uh, i want to just show you that how bad you are now here is the power there are three possible responses which you may do the first i am saying is a victim response 
the second is that you show the anger back third is a mature rational adult response so we will explore these three things because just awareness of games okay we can say yeah i also have a product owner who gets angry for small small things now what do i do now that's the point what do you do when you see this game happening what possible things you can do and this is something you need to find out but yeah here i'm sharing some of the possible things which might happens when somebody gets angry and these are the possible things somebody feels helpless so victim so some provocation happen the other person starts playing now i got you son of the bitch want to do a punishment and you become victim you become silent yeah you don't know like the person the, the, the other party just takes it they don't respond at all now what happened is you may see okay this is this is a good thing one can do it but we don't see this creates a loop somebody gets angry on you you remain silent you says i understand you are angry what can i do and you inside you keep feeling that what can i do this person is like this only i am i'm such a pathetic stage i am in a bad company this that you remain silent means you are creating a delay and the same game will come tomorrow again or day after tomorrow again because the pattern continues the person gets angry the other person remains silent and things goes goes in a in a loop so if you see somebody getting angry with you frequently you might be playing that game you are part of that game and that's why the person gets angry with you all the time second option you become rebel so it's like the other person picks you they start the person starts yelling on you and you yell back you says now i also got you son of the bitch and it's like excellent so it's like uh, 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 and maybe some the, the it depends upon how the other player takes it maybe the other players enjoys it he says okay now i have a chance to show something and it may keep running for a while till the time one person end up losing or getting into a silent so it's like that the intensity of games may increase and both of the party may enjoy it because nobody wants to work he says this guy is, is stupid he always make issue of small things the other person keeps saying that these people are are irresponsible they don't take care of it you say your point they say their point and there is no end you are very clear that these these stakeholders are are not not good for anything the other person is also clear that this development team is not good for anything so both of you living in your own world and blaming each other and this this may helps you to keep things active now third possible response which we tend to promote it's difficult it's something like somebody plays and now i got you son of the bitch with you 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 want to give a punishment maybe you acknowledge that okay we acknowledge this thing was not tested well and now you ask what can be done now so it's like it happened okay i understand you are angry i acknowledge that i hear you everything is good everything has been acknowledged now what should we do from here and this is like you are asking an adult question to the person who is in angry mode it may says what can i do now i can't go back and fix it okay do we want to have some agreement on our future work so that we can take care of these things so you take it as an opportunity to fix even if the 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 the, the problem is 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 this appropriately uh, 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 like expanded it just pushed on you but at the same time you take it as an opportunity you take it it's a moment to learn something the other guy and acknowledge that yes we miss this part of it rather than getting into the emotional part of why the other person is getting angry and ask what can be done now if you do that we are breaking that loop we break that loop and probability of this loop continuation goes down so as a sim simple simple thing in a team coaching environment we want these players aware what they are doing so maybe when you are a team coach you see some developer is getting excited on other developer on a very small thing maybe we can make him aware that i am like are you not playing some game here are we disproportionately uh, uh, 
expanding a, a given issue and at the same time as a scrum master or coach you also keep watching yourself for playing this game because most of us end up playing once in a while and you teach teams about how to handle this game how not to play because see one person cannot play alone one person cannot play alone that there is there is a need of other guy and if if you teach team members how to get out of that game it can make these things quite positive now i pause here and i ask uh, you guys do you see this game happening around you or this is something like never seen so i need uh, only uh, a comment from the people who fun who have never seen it so they they can put it a comment and the other who see it maybe every day only two words every day or never that's it in between guys you wait for the for the next uh, thing before you come at here so i take a pause to to see if i get a comments so we do see a raise of hand in a webinar setup it won't be possible to directly address you so please put into a question there you can communicate okay so we see some finding it every day okay so i have yet to see a person saying never so i am i am i i can assume that rest of you see it sometime okay so good so this is something uh, and and a and a one game idea is that we take some something out from it okay so i can see the game is happening and i could handle it probably when it happens next time let's move forward and get into the second game see what you made me do it's like the people who play this game they usually do everything for someone else it's like i do everything because somebody has advised me i don't do anything on 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 myself okay now before i move forward i pause for a while so there is a there is a question came in that how to handle a situation when you ask what can be done now but the angry person keeps in his own loop of yelling good question i don't know <laughs> i don't know because you will know the best i have my ideas my sharing maybe you just keep repeating it so it's like uh, uh, this is something an emotional intelligence thing so if you find somebody is emotionally charged up and the person is charged up very angry and want to talk to you and you you want to have a rational conversation with the other guy the other person is not listening to you he keep repeats and keep repeats and keep repeating now what probable answer probable option you have probable option i am not saying there is an absolute one option probable option you have is that you remain calm and you keep repeating your question and if you remain calm after a while you may see the other person also calming down so we call it that these emotions are contagious so you they they they, they affect each other if somebody is angry and yelling on you there is a high probability that you will also get into the same emotion but the reverse is also true if somebody is angry and yelling on you and you are remaining calm there is a probability that the other person will also get calmer after some time but it's about all waiting for a while and then only this can happen yeah that's also a, the, the the one of the participants suggested that if you can bring a delay in between if some person is saying and continuing this anger and all so one way to make the other person pause is introduce some delays is okay i i definitely want to talk to you about this particular thing but i have something to do can i catch you after 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes so it's something like this so that probably bring some gap so other person also understand what the emotional uh, things things gets calmer and then you can have a more meaningful conversation great point ravi kumar okay so second game see what you made me do so it's like Uh, the people who always ask for advice you need to decide on their behalf and it, you may sometimes feel very good about it but it's more like they don't do anything they do because somebody told them to do and if something goes wrong they cannot be blamed because they just did as per somebody else said that person should be blamed so this is something a game we call it see what you made me 
Q. So in a something like you want to encourage people to pull the work and uh, you may see as a scrum master always wanted to tell them that guys pick up the work and identify which work should should work better and uh, a developer says that no 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 please don't do that you assign me some work which you feel is right and or you suggest me how to handle this situation as you feel right and a scrum master get into a loop and says okay i will tell you how to do it and uh, after some time when things goes bad the developer says that since you suggested this approach i just do it you see that you have created a mess for me now i am in trouble see what you have made me do again another example product owner asked a development team member to help in a writing or a user story or or finding some acceptance criteria and when you were doing a demo at the end of a sprint and client has some observations and the product guy start looking at you and says see what you made me face here because of you i am stuck you like i should not have given this work to you or something now you did it and i am suffering see what you made me do so this game is i would say is is not necessarily a team game uh, this game is played by few individuals and uh, uh, it is also played again each game needs a player so there is another player also who is who is trying to help someone now the other person is not there 100% he is he is not understanding every aspect of of some issue uh but the other person if if respond back that okay i was just trying to help you you should be behaving like this so he start becoming a parental thing so if the game has happened some failure has happened and the person starts blaming you and you start playing the other game that i was always trying to help you lecture you and and you make the person uh, justify that this is because because of you are wrong doing rather than me doing but again the game is continued then because you the, the person has has someone to blame and in a way you you defend your blame and some part of it you take it and after some time the same loops uh, continues now probably what you can do here is that you stop taking decisions on behalf of someone if somebody says please suggest you says i don't know you have to pick to pick it the work i can't suggest you may want to take half an hour to decide take it you want to take 2 hours to decide take it but i can't give you so it's more like don't make decisions based for 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 other people let them learn to make their decision let them own what they they want to do so as a coach scrum master what you can do here is make the the individuals who are playing this game aware that they are doing it that's the first thing you can do and you also start noticing when it is getting played and also keep watching yourself that okay you you are not participating in a game not necessarily you are initiating the game but if somebody initiate and you jump into it then you are also participating in it you are suggesting something trying to help someone and uh, also create an awareness in the team about this particular game so what happens is when you create this awareness when the situation is not there so people don't emotionally attach with it you just create an awareness and later on when the situation comes in you can just make them relate these two things sometimes it becomes difficult when somebody is playing this game and then you are trying to teach him that you are playing this game then then the person may not take it positively because now it is too much attached to the person and it looks like that you are blaming or lecturing him it's it's good to have awareness created before and once once you see the instance coming in then relate it because awareness was already created before if you introduce when you see the instance then there is a possibility people won't take it in a positive sense second game so i'm not pausing there are smaller games i am i'm just continuing and i will introduce two more games and then then i will uh, talk about it on the doubtful this is like coffee conversations so you blame management you blame uh, a client you blame system you blame politics you blame everybody else in this world so it's like two people sitting and saying that you know this company cannot change or this project has no future this person is that and other person is also saying yes yes you are right this is so such an awful situation aren't it awful people talking about it in a this particular way etc etc 
Now, this is like a, not a positive conversation, but people enjoy it because nobody is, is, is taking action out of it. So you can say a gossips may, may fall fall here. It's, it's more like uh, just enjoying and, and putting things in a, in a loop. So this is something a uh, very, very common game which you see in your corporate environment. Now, what kind of a belief this game probably create in individuals? It's like we are good and the problem is somewhere else. So like you may always keep say, seeing developers, testers, or whatever team members talking about management is saying this, management is doing this, client is doing this somewhere else. So it's like we all are good. We are doing the perfect thing. Now there is a devil somewhere, a, a, a mythical creature which is called management. Sometimes we don't even know who is the person. Like if 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 you ask them, okay, who is the person who is creating problem? This is no management is creating problem. Problem. So who is that person? Many times they don't know who is that person who could be called management, but they just have someone to talk about that management is creating problem. So it's like a, an environment or a conversation where we are saying that there is a problem somewhere else and we can't do anything about it. And the whole world is not good. And uh, yeah, we can't do anything about it. Yeah, we can just talk about them and waste our own time and uh, justify to ourselves that whatever wrong is happening, is beyond our control. We can't do much about it because it's awful. Uh, yeah. So many times when I go to conferences, an agile conference or whatever uh, project conferences and all, uh, I find this game played by many speakers. So we we find that okay, team is doing great job, management doesn't understand it. So let's blame the management in the whole conversation and find then now team members also like whoever is listening also enjoys this. Yeah, 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 we are all good. You know, there is a management until the time they change, nothing can change. So the speaker as well as audience both think about some third devil who should learn something so that our life becomes better. And that devil is not listening to these two people. <laughs> and then he is he even not aware that somebody is thinking about them like this particular way. And yeah, both of the, the conversation goes good and nothing comes out from it. So we call it Aunt It Outful. Okay, final game. And then I will take a little pause and, and have a conversation around these games. We call this, call, why don't you? And yes, but. This is more like a coach project manager's game. So somebody comes up with a problem. And you as a as an expert or perceived expert, you start with the conversation. Why don't you do something like this? The other person will answer, yes, but it doesn't work here. So it's like a conversation keeps going and you say this person never accepts my suggestion. And it's like uh, 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 the other person don't want to accept your suggestion and he wants to show that whatever advice you are giving can't work in this particular uh, context and uh, but you don't get this feedback back. You you just keep doing it and uh, this continues. Why don't you? Yes, but it's like no suggestion ever get accepted. So you want to do something. You go to the, the manager and manager says, why don't you something something or a, or a friend says, why don't you something something? You reply, yes, but this doesn't work here. This, 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 this and, and continues. No suggestion is ever accepted. Now this game, which is very common, probably can be solved when you stop giving suggestions. You say, somebody comes with a problem and you just says, yeah, this is a difficult problem. What do you think you are going to do about it? So rather than I says, why don't you, I ask you, what do you think you are going to do about it? And now I'm not giving any suggestion. Probably the person says, have you ever faced this situation before? He says, yeah, I faced it. I did this, but what are you going to do about it? Or you can say that I saw other person faced it. He did this, but what are you going to do about it? So you are not suggesting the guy to follow what you did or what other person did. You are only suggesting him to follow something which he wants to follow. Something like giving a freedom to decide what possible thing will, will help him. So this is something we call it why don't you and we break this particular game in this way? Okay, so 
again summary is now before we go further here i want to put a poll and take a view from you about all these games so the idea is which of the following game you end up playing very very frequently you can select multiple options and uh, if you don't see any of these games in your environment don't pick any option it's okay yeah but if you see that happening then do pick it and if there are some questions in parallel to your uh, to this poll data collection please put them across i will see them once i share the result of these uh, things with with you okay so i share so here are we now somebody asked in the beginning that do you see these things happening in a corporate setting so a limited data which is coming from our audience i think 70% see this happening and uh, they see it happening at a at a good scale like good number of games are are in 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 i take a pause here and to collect the questions i still have to present some more concepts which will help us in exploring game when we we reach in our work environment okay okay so we have a question here one one common scenario project manager scrum master takes makes decisions on a delivery timeline without team consensus putting team on uh, 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 see what you made me do when the project fails but how to overcome this situation ah yeah so what do you think can help us here my guess is my guess is we bring so it's idea like if i commit on the behalf of someone else then i also own the responsibility of getting it done and if something doesn't work there i also takes the blame from management as well as from the team both and that is why in agile world we promote i am not saying it happens all the time we promote that some way or other we need to make team accountable so we need to make sure that team owns it they say yeah 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 we are committing to it and this is what best we can. again whenever you are doing estimation commitment in the beginning there is always uncertainty so it's like you are going to uncover things as you go forward it is it is true you commit or team commit it's going to be more or less plus minus thing but when team is committing they also has a has a commitment to make it work and if it is not working they may able to escalate it early and often so again you need to see how it works in your context the general practice which people use is bring some level of engagement from the team so that they don't feel somebody else is responsible for their for their misery <clears throat> now this is like see what you made me do is not only visible in offices it's also visible in our families so we may blame our parents for the education we went into we may blame our someone uh, for the job which we are doing we blame uh, someone for for the city which we are living in so it's like somebody took a decision on our behalf and we were not happy about it and then rather than doing something about it during that point in time we choose to blame and and that's like we keep saying see what you made me do all the time and there is no definitive answers to these games yeah you need to see and experiment with them great let's explore a few more things we have a 15 minutes so the games are patterns they creates beliefs which creates reality and uh, for productive and positive teams we want to create a positive patterns and uh, games usually comes up when people don't want to take accountability they want to have someone to blame for and uh, they the game also comes into the play when you have saying something and doing something so you have little bit inauthenticity in your conversations so we call it a uh, gap between what you really mean and what you really do you say something but your ulterior communication is is saying something else and that's why the mind games comes into the play 
Now there is another way to look at this particular uh, 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 thing. We call it uh, a triangle of victim, prosecutor, and rescuer. So this is like a Crapman drama triangle, which you may see always there in in all dramas, be it movie, be it a real life. What happens here is that any situation you see that there is someone who is poor victim so he is getting prosecuted by a prosecutor somebody is is harming or after the life of someone and then this victim is looking for a rescuer and rescuer comes and he tries to help the guy now many times what happens is there are not real rescuers there are pretending to be a rescuer because say somebody comes up and says can you help me here uh, uh, they wanted to make a presentation somebody asked you can you help me here you says yeah actually i don't have a time but uh, see if i can do it tomorrow and it depends upon the other player if the other player really want to play a poor me game he says yeah yeah i am so so uh, hopeless about it i will wait for you tomorrow please do it for tomorrow he says okay i will i will try to find a time now this rescuer is is actually not that much committed to solve that problem but he he sees that okay the other person is also not guessing i will see i i may try to help it now it may happen the next day the victim come back the poor me come back and ask the rescuer that can we have a time here and the rescuer says actually i have another meeting i can't give you a time today there is a probability the victim get angry and he become a prosecutor prosecutor to a rescuer that that you are such a bad guy you are such a bad manager you never give time to your people this 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 is and this is like uh, the the role got changed the victim become a prosecutor and the rescuer become a victim and the new loop get get started and the 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 rescuer when, now he is a victim might be looking looking for some other rescuer for him or herself so it's like uh, 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 the the uh, the players and the players these are roles the players keeps changing somebody some person become a victim another time somebody else now how do we handle this this kind of of things the idea here is the victim should get away from poor me to to self awareness and a problem solving mode that yes i have a problem now can you help me how to solve it so i am not getting into poor me stage but i am looking for assistance and similarly the the rescuer should be caring but not making too far reaching commitments and not over problem solving providing the boundaries clear that i can only help this much beyond that i can't do it so making it clear that this is something i can do this is something i can't do and this much i can care for you and we also try to teach the prosecutors not to prosecute but but put their statements in a assertive fashion so rather than bringing a punishment and blame they should put what they need so we teach them as as an agile coach and scrum master that don't stop asking about your need but you don't have to prosecute the other guy for for these things so this is like in in many of these games you will see these three things happening somebody is is, is becoming a, a poor me and somebody is, is becoming okay i will help you and somebody is, is is the villain in this whole whole story so if we we see this this roles getting played in our team we may teach each role player to move away from an unhealthy patterns towards a healthy patterns moves towards a winners triangles rather than uh loses triangles so these are the some reference books so somebody was asking that can you give me a name of the book uh, uh, clearly so this is something you can look at these are the two books i referred while making this presentation along with other things uh, some explorations which you can do in in future it's these are some of the books you can read so game people play the fifth discipline i am okay you are okay these are these are good books to to go through you can also go through some trainings so in ic agile program we create a lot of self awareness part of it and uh, gradually we are also adding the gaming element uh, inside it so you may probably think of of going through our coaching program uh, there are also a transaction analysis as a field uh, which which also runs their own program so we don't run those programs ourselves but you can find uh, trainings and programs on transaction analysis which probably will help you to understand these patterns and these things in a more and more practical way and here is some information related to our upcoming icagile program 
uh, we started the virtual program also nowadays, which runs for six weeks, which is relatively a longer program, which is far, far different than our classroom programs for ICHI. Uh, so if some of you who are not in India and cannot give a dedicated time or on, on three consecutive days, I will encourage you to go look for a virtual uh, a program. The virtual program runs three hours a week and then you have a lot of time to explore in between. So we do assignments. We give learning materials which has to be explored before we that the participant comes in the next session. So which, which creates a very like extensive learning experience compared to a three days of of class, but I, at the same time we do run three days of class and depending upon if you are around in these cities, you feel comfortable to explore more about these particular programs. So here I pause and uh, you can visit our website to get more details about our programs and what we do. And here is my Twitter handle or email ID if you have any follow up conversation to do with me. I'm looking at the questions now. Uh, uh, and uh, see if uh, uh, see something uh, is, is, is here. Now it's, it's a very like insightful comment I see is that how to handle aren't it our full situation this spoils the organization culture and I would say that some percentage of it might be always there but when this becomes the, the prominent conversations in individuals you see this this uh, spoils the organization culture. Now my advice, again, not a perfect advice is, as a leader, you also set an example of conversation. Now make sure that you don't play that game. When people come up with, you know, in this company, Agile can't work, you know where we, how these things can happen. You quickly recognize that this is going to happen, aren't it our fault? And you take a pause and say, okay, but what can we do about it? It should be our focus area. So as a leader, we do set up an example of behavior and we do have an option to set that example and that can reduce the amount of, of anti doubtful game our team members are playing. And then we can also make them aware by way of making them aware of the game. We can just use, okay, looks like guys, you are picking anti doubtful So whenever they start talking about this, you, you, if you end up observing, it says, okay, great conversation, but don't you think we are playing anti doubtful? This is okay, yeah, they may laugh and get out of it. Now, there are some players who are hard players, they will not get out of it, but many will laugh on it and then says, yeah, let's move forward. Done with anti doubtful. Okay, so yeah, this is what pretty much I wanted to cover today, and we are quite well on our time. Thank you for joining our webinar. Uh, it's like I understand it was a little uh, unconventional topic for many of you, uh, but uh, I do believe if you explore this little more in detail, it has potential to improve your personal interactions as well as uh, uh, as well as the professional interactions in your organization or in your context. Thank you friends, thank you for joining in. And if you have any follow-up queries, please feel free to drop me an email or visit our website. Thank you.